Uh, like in, we are in this country, in the United Kingdom, England is part of it. Here we have the English people, we have the Scottish people, we have the Welsh people, we have the Irish people in Northern Ireland, in the uh, United Kingdom, all right? But uh, they believe in, if they are Christian, in Christianity differently. You know, they are not united in that, okay? But most of these uh, uh, European Christians, they are leaving the church, they are leaving Christianity. Even now, if, if, if now I look behind me, I see mostly they are our African brothers. They are Christians, Protestant Christians, okay? They are speaking. And less of our English, Welsh, Scottish, Irish uh, Christians, you see less of them, but more of these African Christians. And these are, you also see more of these Indian Christians, all right? Now, you see, we Muslims, to be Muslims, we have to believe everything in our Holy Quran, all right? And anything which is in our Holy Quran, which we say is the book of Allah, and we don't believe in that, that means we might be saying we are Muslims, but because we are not believing in certain things in the Holy Quran, so that person cannot be a Muslim. Similarly, in the Bible, look, in the Bible, it tells us that Jesus prays, all right? I'll give you an example. For example, in the uh, in every Christian Bible, you have the Gospel according to Luke. In the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 22, verse 41, it tells us Jesus, he knelt down and prayed. So, is this verse in the Bible true? Yes, it's got to be true. It's in the Christian Bible. They have to accept it. That it says, Jesus knelt down and prayed. Now, if Jesus knelt down and prayed, surely Jesus must have knelt down and prayed to God. Because if Jesus himself was God, he would not be kneeling down and praying. Would he be praying to himself? Would, he, would Jesus be kneeling down to himself? Would Jesus be praying to himself? No, you know. So, that's why uh, you know, there are so many, for example, I'll give another verse from the Bible, you know, in the Bible, in the Gospel of, uh, Gospel according to John, chapter 8, verse 26, Jesus is quoted as saying, what does Jesus say? Jesus says, but he who sent me is trustworthy, and what I have heard from him I tell the world. So in other words, this verse, is it true that it's in the Bible? So the Christian must accept it. Well, what does Jesus say? Jesus said that he who sent me is trustworthy. Have a nice day. Uh, Jesus, can you come over here? Okay. Did you say Jesus died? Yeah, because of you. Okay, what Jesus God? Okay, don't respond to oh, me. Okay, I'm <laughs> talking with the lady later on. All right, anyway, so uh, that was the question, you know, I would have asked him, but he would not have been able to answer. Because I'm talking to you, so I got to give you, because uh, time is very precious, uh, precious, and life is very precious. So in life, we have to learn what we are here for. How did we come to the earth? I mean, there must be a cre creator, you know. There's a station, it's called Stratford Station. Now that station was built by the human beings, okay? It was built. Now where did this earth come from? Where did these skies come from? I mean, they didn't all of a sudden come by themselves. They were created by the one and only creator, by the one and only God Almighty, we say Allah. Okay, now look, Islam is the truth because, you know, Allah says, 
that, uh, you know, I gave you a couple of verses from the Bible about Jesus, that he was never God, you know. And uh, in the Bible also, in the Gospel according to John, chapter 5, verse 37, okay, Jesus is quoted as saying, what does Jesus say? Jesus says about God, you have never heard his voice. Whose voice? Jesus is saying to the people, when Jesus is speaking to the people, Jesus is saying, you have never heard his voice, nor seen his face. So Jesus is speaking to the people and he's telling the people that you have never heard God and you have never seen the face of Jesus, the face of God. Now, is that true? As Muslim, we would say it is true. And if Christians believe the Bible, this is a verse in the Bible, so they must accept that this is true. This is Jesus speaking. So, when Jesus says, you have never seen the face of God, is he speaking the truth? We Muslims believe, yes, though this verse is in the Bible, yes, yeah, Jesus is speaking, is speaking the truth. But the people Jesus is speaking to, did they see the face of Jesus? Yes, but Jesus is saying, you have never seen the face of God. So, in simple English, anybody who understands English will understand that when Jesus himself says that you have never seen the face of God, that means Jesus, Christians who say Jesus is God, he can never be God. Because firstly, Jesus never in any verse, anywhere, did Jesus say that he is God, you know? And I gave you a verse in the Bible where it told us that Jesus knelt down and he prayed. And surely when we use common sense, when we, we use logic, we can come to the conclusion if there's a verse in the Bible which tells us that Jesus bowed down, Jesus prayed, or Jesus looked up and Jesus prayed, then that will tell us anybody who prays cannot be God. So Jesus prayed to not to himself, to the Creator, Allah, God Almighty. All right? Now, ask some Christians, what Jesus God? They will say yes. Ask some Christians, was God the Father God? They will say yes. Ask some Christians, was Jesus a prophet? They will say yes. Ask some Christians, was Jesus a prophet? They will say no. You know, so Christians are not united. They are disunited. They have the Bible, the verses are in the Bible, and you ask the Christian, do you believe the Bible? They say yes. But when you give them these verses, they give you different verses, all this. You know, the Jews believe there's only one God, okay? And in the Old Testament of each and every Christian Bible, there is the Old Testament, okay? And the Old Testament, all the books in the Old Testament, for example, the book of Deuteronomy, the book of First Samuel, the book of Second Samuel, and the other books also, okay? They are from the Jewish books. All the books in the Old Testament of the Christian Bible, whether it's the Protestant Bible, whether it's the Catholic Bible, whether it's the one of the Orthodox Bible, all the Old Testament books in all these different Bibles, they are from the Jewish books. And the Jews, there is no Jew in the world who believes that God is one in three or three in one. Okay, why? Because in the Jewish books, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4, 
The Prophet Moses, Musa Lisa, Moses, peace be upon him, is speaking to the people and he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. So Moses said, The Lord our God is one. So Moses believed God is one. The people of Israel, the Jews, they believe God is one. They used to believe one then and now. And what did Jesus say in the New Testament? In the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 12, verse 29, someone asked Jesus. Jesus replied, same thing, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. So when Moses said the Lord our God is one, it meant the God of Moses and the people he was speaking to, the Lord our God is one. Okay. And when Jesus said in the Gospel according to Mark chapter 12 verse 29, the Lord our God is one, it meant the God of Jesus and the God of the people Jesus was speaking to is also one. Not Trinity. Three in one, one in three. Another thing, there are churches which are known as Unitarian churches. Unitarian. Have you ever heard of Christians who are known as Unitarian Christians? Now, the Unitarian Christians, they believe that God is only one. They don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe God is one in three, three in one. All right? And uh, like Muslims, we believe God is one. The Jews believe God is one. All right? Now, where the Jews stopped was that the Jews did not believe that Jesus was a prophet. All right? And the Jews did not believe, uh, you know, the Jews just believed in their previous books, in their books, all right, and in the Torah, okay. Now, in our Holy Quran, you know, people, a lot of propaganda that, you know, Islam is spreading all over the world. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was, a, was an Arab, okay, and he received the first revelation when he was 40 years old, all right, 40 years old. Now, and the prophet received, uh, you know, the revelation of the Holy Quran, different verses at different times, as the situation required. So the Holy Quran was revealed over a period of nearly 23 years. From the, from the time the prophet was 40 years old, to the time the Prophet was 63 years old, you know, over a period of 23 years, the Holy Quran was revealed. And the Prophet died when he was passed away when he was 63 years old. All right? Now, we Muslims who believe Jesus was a Prophet, we say he was not killed on the cross. Jesus did not die on the cross. All right? God took him up alive. But the Christians who believe Jesus is God, they say Jesus was killed on the cross. Jesus was crucified on the cross. You know, how can you believe Jesus, you know, Christians say he was God. Then they say he was, you know, in the Bible it tells us Jesus was arrested by the Roman soldiers. And then he was taken on the cross. He was put on the cross. Can you believe that creation the Roman soldiers, they took prisoner their creator Jesus, they tied up their creator, their God Jesus, and they put him on the cross, and they killed their God Jesus on the cross. It's unbelievable. Another thing, in Islam, it's a very beautiful thing. Look, in Islam, every baby born anywhere in the world, in any household, okay? A baby born in North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Australasia, Europe, anywhere in the world. In a Muslim household, in a Christian household, in a Jewish household, in an atheist household, you know, whether the family is white, 
Whether the family is black, whether the family is Asian, a baby born, whether a boy or a girl, in Islam, a baby born is born without sin. Children are born, they don't know how to speak or what people are speaking around them. They don't know what they are saying because they got to learn how to speak first, all right? So how can the children become sinners? They don't even know sin. So in Islam, it's a beautiful teaching. Every baby born is born not a sinner, okay? They are not sinners. It's from the time the baby boy becomes a man, grown up, or a baby girl becomes a grown up, becomes a woman, from that time they are responsible for their actions. But the Christians say that every baby born is a born sinner. Like, you can come. Preacher, preacher, come here. Preacher, come here. Okay, that's a Christian preacher. Okay, we uh, talk to each other, but he keeps going away. Because what I am saying, I'm not boasting, he will never debate with me because he knows that I'll give him verses from the Bible he cannot answer. And when they cannot answer, they say it's a mystery. You understand? So can you believe another thing? In our in our Holy Quran, in Surah Az Zumar, uh, which is the Surah chapter number 39, okay? Verse number 53. I have verse number 53. Allah says in Allah, towards the end of the ayah was Allah says, In Allah, Yaqfiru Zanuba Jamia. Allah, God Almighty, He can forgive all sins. So, yes, we are human beings. Sometimes we do wrong things. We commit sin. We shouldn't. But we, you know, Satan's around, Shaitan, Satan's around. We do wrong things. But we cannot lose hope. Okay? We cannot lose hope. We pray to Allah, ask Him forgiveness. He will forgive us. Okay? But in Christianity, they tell us Jesus was God and Jesus Himself died on the cross. Why? They say to pay for the sins of everyone. Now, if Jesus was God, does God have to die for us to pay for our sins? God can just forgive us. Like in the Holy Quran, Allah says, In Allah, Yaqfiru Zanuba Jamia. Allah, God Almighty, can forgive all sins. All we need to do is pray, ask for forgiveness. He will forgive us. You know. So, the Christians say, you know, God died. And then, you know, we Muslim believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, is immortal. Immortal means never born never dies and we say Allah God Almighty has no beginning no end and the Christians who say Jesus is God they say he is God he is Almighty but yes he was born so does it mean Jesus so that means Jesus had a beginning he was born yeah he was Jesus was even born after his mother Mary after his stepfather Joseph the carpenter now how can we believe that a Jewish man, Joseph the carpenter, was the stepfather of God, Jesus. You understand? It's unbelievable. Okay? So, in Islam, we live our lives. What does Allah tell us? In Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, which is Surah chapter number 2, ayah verse number uh, 195. Allah says, Wa ahsinu and do good. In Allah Yuhibbul Muhsinin. Surely Allah loves the doers of good. So if we do good, God Almighty Allah will love us. Okay? And Allah also tells Allah loves the righteous. Okay, in Allah you hibbul muttaqin in Surah at tawbah the repentance Surah chapter number 9, ayah, verse number 4 and 7 towards the end of those verses, Allah says, In Allah you hibbul muttaqin. Surely Allah loves the righteous. Who the righteous? The Muslims. 
Why the Muslims? Because the Muslims believe in that there is only one creator, one God Almighty, Allah. Why? Because the Muslims believe in all the prophets. Okay? We don't differentiate uh, between prophets. They were prophets. Okay? Now, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Okay? I'll tell you another miracle. You know, more than 1400 years ago, when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was uh, preaching to the people and the Holy Quran was being revealed. Okay. We have a Surah Al Fath, the victory. It's a, one of the big miracles I'm going to show you now. All right. I'm going to speak about. In Surah Al Fath, the victory, which is Surah chapter number 48, Ayah verse number 28. Allah said, Ho wallazi arsala, ho wallazi arsala, rasulahu bilhuda wa deen il hakke le yuzhirao ala deen e kulle. In English, in, in English translation, Allah said, Surah Al Fat, chapter 48, verse 28. Allah said, It is He who sent His messenger. Who is the messenger? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The messenger of Allah and Allah is God Almighty and those with uh, his messenger with guidance. Okay. What's the guidance? The Holy Quran. Okay. Our holy book. Okay. With guidance and the religion of truth. What's the religion of truth? Islam. Okay. To manifest it over all other to make it prevail over all other religion and sufficient is Allah's witness. So when it says to make Islam prevail over all other religions, so today the world population is just over 8 billion, more than 8,000 million human beings. And today there are more than seven and a half thousand different beliefs, different religions. Okay, and Allah said more than 1400 years ago that Islam will prevail over all other religions. So more than seven and a half thousand religions believes today, Islam today is number two. Why? Number one, Christianity, because Christians are between 2.3 billion to 2.4 billion. And the Muslim number two at the moment, why? Because the Muslims are between 2 billion to 2.1 billion. But by the year 2050, 50, 2050 onwards, according to the American USA based Pew Research Organization and Mus their statistics, and according to Muslim statistics, the Number Islam will become the biggest religion, the number one religion in the world from the year 2050 onwards. And Christianity will come down to number two. So the miracle I told you about, that Allah said that Islam will prevail over all other religion. From the year 2050 onwards, that would come true because Islam, which has been growing all the time, the number of Muslims have been growing all the time. Muslims are, be Muslims are becoming more and more. So the number of Muslims, 2050 onwards, number one. So Islam will be number one. So that's a reality, you know. And Islam never spread by the sword. Some people might say, oh, the Muslim Islam spread by the sword. No way. It's by... People, you know, uh, look, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was an Arab. Now, hundreds of millions of African people, they are Muslim. African countries, look, Nigeria, one of the most populated African countries, one of the most militarily strong African countries, is majority Muslim now. Other African countries, for example, Senegal, Gambia, Chad, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, 
used to be known as the Ivory Coast. Then in Africa, you have other countries, you know, Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Morocco, so many countries, they are Muslim, okay? So today, in the world, out of just over 200 countries in the world, 57 countries in the world are majority Muslim, okay? And why? Because the number of Muslims keeps growing. Okay, so you know, even in this European country, now look, uh, you are a youngster, I'm an old man, but from primary school, my education is in this country. And I look around, look, in Islam, abortion is forbidden, okay, haram. Why? Because life is very important. Even the life of the unborn child is important in Islam. So abortion is haram, unless the life of the mother is in danger and the baby has not yet got life in it, it's not breathing, you understand? It's in the very early stages of conception, okay, that the woman is with the baby, before the baby starts breathing before life is put in the baby. They can have abortion if the life of the mother is in danger. Otherwise, in Islam, abortion is haram, you cannot. Why? Because the life of the baby is very important. Okay? So Islam is for saving lives, not for killing. Now look around, we are in Stratford. How many people are European? How many people are non-European? So many. Why? Because, for example, this beautiful country, the United Kingdom, where we are at the moment, okay, people either don't get married, okay, I'm talking about non-Muslims, like Europeans, either they don't get married, or they say, oh, we are young, we'll get married later, you know, that's, oh, uh, so when they say we'll get married later, they become, you know, from 20 years to 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, then it's too late, not married. And if they do get married, then they say, okay, we are young, we'll have children later on. And 